Hey everyone, uh, thank you for joining me with uh, my presentations. I hope that uh, it will be interesting for you and also I hope that uh, there will be like some new things that you can learn. Uh, of course, the topic that I'll be talking, uh, lights, it's a very, very huge topic. So I won't be going into a lot of details since this is hours and hours of talk. But we will go through some of the things that I've encountered in my work and uh, how most effectively and easily you can uh, create something which is with a very nice result and from there further improve it. So first, a uh, few words about me. As uh, I was introduced, I'm called Stefan Ivanov. Uh, originally from Bulgaria and uh, I've been working in game industry a little bit more uh, than 10 years now and at the moment uh, I'm working as a technical artist but before I got to a technical artist you can see that I went from game designer, 3D artist, I also have uh, interest in music and uh, yeah many many different things so all, all of these uh, things I've learned in my experience, I can say that uh, are coming today for helping me with uh, TechArt. Uh, currently, I'm working at uh, Sparasoft Krakow. We are doing uh, code development and are helping some of our partners you can see on the, on the right side. Uh, and it's mainly AAA development. I can say that the things that I will show in the presentations, uh, presentation helped me a lot and were a lot used into some of the projects uh, that I've worked in the company. Uh, and I can also say that the scenes that you see uh, on the presentations, they are not, not from, uh, from the company, they are specially made for you. Put some extra effort. Okay. Quick overview of uh, some of the things that I will start talking about. So, light is something which is around us longer than humans existed. And yeah, everyone has seen uh, every day lots of lots of light examples. And when uh, you're showing as an artist to, to someone your, your scene and uh, they immediately, if there is something off with your lights, or they will immediately see this because it's something that we are so used to seeing it that you subconsciously already know what, uh, what's wrong. But uh, of course, only people which are uh, more familiar can give you this positive feedback of uh, what exactly is the issue. Uh, but anyone, uh, and this is actually a very good, uh, good tip, that uh, if you are now starting and you are working uh, as a 3D artist or uh, as a light artist, uh, to show some of your work to friends. And I'm sure that uh, if there is something very wrong with, <laughs> with your scene, they will immediately say that uh, this feels weird or that they will immediately point to some region which uh, doesn't feel right. So, going in the past, as I said, uh, light is something which has been around us for a very, very long time. So, I first want to introduce a little bit uh, some classical artists and what they were doing. And later on, I will go to how all the techniques that they were using uh, centuries ago can be used and uh, how I'm implementing all these uh, techniques and things that I learned uh, in my studies for uh, all of my art. So first thing, uh, all the classical arts, by the way, are going to be from a French artist that I, I really like him. Uh, so this scene is called the Oath of Horatis. And you, as you can see, there is a father that he is sending the story behind it. Is uh, this father he is sending his three sons to a battle? Uh, the kids and the women they are crying for them. Are they going to return and so on? 
But the interesting part is how uh, the artist is playing with the composition elements here and also how he is using the light in the scene to enhance everything and uh, make it more understandable. To help you a little bit uh, what I mean, I created some guides. Uh, first, with the blue elements, uh, with the blue lines, you can see I marked uh, some of the uh, scene elements that uh, the artist is using to guide your eye. There are a couple of uh, different uh, parts of the painting which are uh, the main focus and which are uh, the areas that uh, the artists want you to concentrate. And funny enough, uh, when there is a person or there is like some creature or something like this on your uh, artwork, usually uh, we as people, this is like subconscious thing that we are going for, we first go for faces and this is like the first thing that somebody uh, sees in a picture if there is some, uh, something like that on it. So uh, you can see that he has a couple of uh, areas, they are all uh, like very well lit and also these uh, points of interest, they all have uh, some person there with some kind of an emotion. And the rest of the elements of the scene make it so that your eye is being guided through it uh, in a way that it circles around these points of interest. Uh, this pretty much is a very important thing for, for us as an artist because uh, if your painting uh, or your artwork is uh, showing, uh, let's say you have a person at the very right end of the painting and he is looking outwards fr from it, this will immediately subconsciously uh, guide the viewers to somebody else's artwork. And back in the good old days, uh, since all of these art pieces, uh, they were uh, displayed in uh, different houses or uh, next to different artwork or different art pieces. So artists, they were using all these tricks to make people stare as long as possible at, at their painting. We're going for the next one. Here, uh, I picked this one because the light setup, as you see from the previous one, which was a little bit more lit, uh, this one has a little bit more harsh shadows and also is, uh, has a lot more contrast. Uh, this is created uh, and used as a technique to make uh, the viewer feel that it's a little bit more dramatic. And this is why like the higher contrast and the darker parts of the scene uh, puts this uh, feeling of, of uh, inside of you when you're watching it that uh, this scene is not very pleasant. Not that seeing somebody drink poison is probably not very pleasant. Again, I marked a couple of the different elements. You can see on the top uh, on the top left corner that uh, I again marked an arc. This was uh, a very uh, used element in uh, modern, and uh, not more only modern, but also in uh, 16th, 17th century art. Uh, and it's a very good way to close your scene and to create some kind of a frame. I can uh, quickly say that, uh, have you guys played Warcraft? I'm talking about Warcraft, Warcraft, not the World of Warcraft. Uh, yeah, if you remember, there was a, a very awesome uh, cinematic there uh, where uh, Arthas is coming back to see his father and he's passing through these holes and uh, all of these holes there, he's walking under arcs. So uh, the guys that were working on the cinematic, they were using the same type of technique for, for closing their frames and uh, yeah, it's even nowadays, it works very well. On the next one, it's from the same artist, uh, but here I want to show you a little bit more how he is uh, planning from the very beginning. This is one of his final artworks that were, was never finished. But 
Uh, here uh, you can see, even from the very beginning, when he's creating uh, his uh, paintings, uh, they already have some uh, guides. And uh, you can see their arms, how they are pointing, uh, the position of the legs, for example, and all these uh, key elements that are creating uh, like one frame and keeping the viewer's eye into the same picture. And especially, it's very well visible here on this area where you can see that there was planned to be something like a tree or some finishing uh, ornament on that side where uh, we'll as well, like half arc, will guide the viewer side upwards. Let's go to modern days. This is uh, one of the scenes that uh, I made for, for the presentation. Uh, I will be showing uh, three different light setups with the same uh, scene and how just changing the direction of the light, a little bit uh, changing the number for the lights as well and also a little bit tweaking uh, the final uh, image in post for, uh, to create different moods. First, I'll go through the scene design because uh, as I showed you from David, he is using lots of scene elements for creating uh, his base composition and later on the light is just complementing those elements and creating uh, additional interest points. This is the so-called grey box design as, uh, as lots of you I, I bet know. So I started planning this scene in the very beginning and I knew that I wanted to have uh, kind of corridor with some a little bit more leftovers, like uh, let's say this is some uh, corridor behind a uh, theater or just in some building which is not used that much. And also wanted to have like some uh, a little bit more interesting uh, shapes there. Uh, and uh, I went for in the beginning as you see with these drawers which are like a little bit more box wise and uh, I decided to have these chairs and lights which are with more circular design. So I already had some, some idea to be honest at this point I, I really didn't know where the whole scene is going and where uh, I want to go in terms of, uh, of mood because it was something which uh, kind of on the way of, of uh, while making the scene uh, I, I decided. So, first I started changing it a little bit. I saw that the lower right corner, it's first very, at, at first point very empty. Second, I need to add some elements there that uh, will help me close my whole frame and also can help me uh, block a little bit the, the light from, uh, the, which is coming from the windows on the right side. On the next one, since we already had this uh, blocking element here, I was wondering what can I change on the far end of the corridor. Uh, initially, I was thinking to actually extend it and just make a very long, uh, not lit corridor, but uh, decided, okay, that's uh, uh, gonna be a little bit trickier. Uh, after that, if I want to create a little bit more uh, uh, different scenes. So I decided to go and close it with a curtain. Curtain is a perfect tool for hiding everything that you don't need <laughs> in the scene. So uh, it, it's very easily created. Uh, this is just some quick max simulation of physics and boom, you get an element to block everything. You can also see on the left side that I a little bit uh, changed the position of, of this drawer, but I was still actually not happy with it because uh, it was taking too much of uh, the whole composition and it was not really contributing a lot to, to it because the, here I already had the idea that uh, the primary light source for, for the image will be from the right side, from the windows and uh, having uh, main light from there would put almost the whole plane, the front plane of, of uh, this drawer uh, uh, lit, which would uh, make it very hard, I would say, to close my uh, composition on that side. So, 
I decided to change it with something a little bit more interesting. It has uh, more different materials, which was uh, very useful at the end when I uh, wanted to already make the scene uh, uh, with textures and to put all the materials and everything because uh, when you're having only materials that are not very shiny, not very reflective, it uh, starts sl uh, slowly to lose in, uh, your audience. So I decided to use this uh, old projector that uh, already actually started making uh, sense for me because as I told you in the beginning I was planning to have uh, this as a, some small corridor behind uh, an old theater so this projector just came perfectly there and also uh, as uh, its geometrical shape it was very nice for uh, guiding the viewer's eye if I lit this front leg uh, lit everything to the front and the other two legs leave it there in a little bit more dark. Light setups. This is the first one that you saw. Uh, it's a very, very simple light setup. As I said, uh, the things that I'll be showing you have the idea to, to show that, yeah, with light you can go very you can go crazy and uh, you can put lots of lots of different uh, lights on your scene and yeah, have very awesome result. Or uh, you can go sometimes very simple, like if you are just uh, have to create a scene to pitch an idea or you want to create this scene to just quickly test uh, some mood or create some kind of an atmosphere or something. Uh, and also you can create good quality final images with uh, very simple light setups if uh, the whole scene and light makes sense. So here I'm using only one directional light uh, which is the main light source from outside and I have two additional spotlights from the top so they are just adding a little bit more uh, detail and a little bit closing this frame from the upper side. I marked again uh, what was my goal. Uh, I wanted to have uh, my interest point in the middle since I don't have any characters that uh, the viewer will go automatically to the their face. I had to make, uh, decided that uh, these uh, chairs are interesting enough as an element to, to be like my main thing in the scene. And I started uh, adjusting the rest of the elements so that uh, they, uh, your eye goes around uh, this element. Moods. This is something which, uh, after finishing the, the scene that, that you saw, I uh, wanted to make uh, and show that uh, by keeping the same elements, and just changing the light setup, uh, you can create a few different feelings of the same scene. And this is very nice and useful, uh, as I said, if you are concepting or pitching an idea, because you can have an idea of uh, some interior or some space or some level for your game. And then by creating uh, a couple of uh, very quick light setups, you can use this to see if your idea works. And as I said, uh, show it to a couple of friends, they will tell you this sucks, no, this is super awesome, and so on and so forth. This is the second uh, light setup. You can uh, see that uh, I kept one of the lights on the top, uh, but for this one I had the idea that uh, maybe behind the camera there is a, a door or something like that. So this door is open, there is a person or somebody which is entering through, through this place, uh, which has still some light on but doesn't look like very habited it's a little bit abundant and on the next one uh, i decided to i really wanted to make just one light uh, setup so i decided that the best thing to do for 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 this scene will be just to put a flashlight at the, at the very back 
Of course, this flashlight, <laughs> it's so bright that, yeah, in, in real life, probably you will never get such, such a flashlight. But uh, you can see that it already created uh, a little bit more uh, uh, of a mood which is uh, of, of abandoned or that there is like some kind of a mystery. I also uh, put a little bit more green uh, to the final frame. So this uh, created this feeling of uh, a little bit more abundant place. This is actually a trick that, uh, for example, in cinema they are using very often uh, putting like a little bit colder uh, values, like bluish or greenish, so that uh, you can feel a little bit more depressed. These are uh, all the variations. And now let's go to Unreal. <laughs> so, as uh, game developers, we, when we are lighting our scenes, we have two ways to go. One is we can decide to go for baked lights. Second one is to go for dynamic lights. My idea for, for the presentation is to tell you a little bit more by, uh, for both uh, ways and also to talk a little bit about uh, how both, uh, what you need to have in mind in terms of performance, what can be, what it will impact, how much it can increase your scope of work for, for your project. Because backlights are awesome, they are, uh, especially if you are talking about Unreal, uh, compared to dynamic lights, they have uh, GI or uh, as uh, guys from, uh, from Epic are, are saying, they, they have this uh, like bouncing light and uh, you're getting lots of uh, extra details and also uh, some of the colors from, from the scene. And uh, yeah, it basically makes your whole scene and uh, everything look more realistic and feel, feel much better. Uh, unfortunately, the, there is not only good, good things about it. Uh, one thing is that you need to spend more time uh, creating your assets, like creating a second channel for baking all these uh, light maps. Uh, and also, uh, if you're creating a mobile game, and especially for, for mobile games, having uh, not very huge in, in size mobile game is, uh, I would say, essential. So uh, having baked light, light maps, uh, you need to keep in mind that uh, these light maps, they are increasing uh, the size of your final uh, game by how, how many megabytes it will be, and also that uh, when the level will be loading, these are additional textures which are going to be loaded uh, to the scene. Uh, here I want to show a little bit uh, an example for uh, what, do, what do I mean by global inhalation and that the lights are bouncing. So you can see uh, two examples, uh, and on the left one, the room, although that, uh, from the light source uh, there is enough light coming, uh, it's completely dark. And on the right side, because of the bouncing lights, we get uh, a little bit more lit environment. The second part, as I said, is uh, about the colors which it's picking. So we have these red carpets here, uh, and you can see on the left side that uh, the columns, they are picking a little bit from uh, the carpet color. So this is also one of the features that you get when uh, you have uh, global illumination. Here, very quick tip for, for your uh, light maps. Uh, as I said, it's very important uh, when you're having uh, a baked scene, you need to create uh, your second channel for baking. You need to be sure and uh, usually like the, good, the best practice, uh, as you can see on the an image on the, uh, on the top, you need to be sure and uh, take care that uh, you have uh, enough uh, light map resolution through your whole scene so that everything is consistent and everything uh, uh, looks good. And uh, there are some objects that you can, for example, uh, create a little bit lower resolution, but uh, overall it's an uh, important thing to uh, keep the same light map density through, through your whole level. So everything looks better and like from the same universe. Uh, 
Uh, this is for, for the light map channel. I put <laughs> this slide because uh, this is a very good example of uh, not very well optimized light maps. So here for, for the light maps, it's uh, important to, especially if you're doing uh, a mobile game and you really are looking to uh, get the maximum in terms of uh, megabytes and uh, not to waste anything, it's uh, yeah, very important to have uh, very well packed light maps. So uh, you use the most of, of uh, this space and also you can use uh, very well uh, the whole baking process and this texture. Dynamic lights. We don't have the problem for creating uh, the second channels, but they are uh, a lot more heavy on performance. Usually uh, for mobile games, I, I've seen that uh, you can use few, uh, from my experience, dynamic lights and uh, your scene uh, will, can look good and uh, can have uh, good performance. Uh, of course, if you're developing for PC or console, this is something which uh, is not bothering you as much. Uh, but it's still something which uh, you need to keep in mind. And for dynamic lights, I want to go quickly through the scene that uh, I set it up. Uh, it's inside Unreal. Uh, so I wanted to make an exterior scene, again with a very simple uh, light setup. And in this one I decided to use a few characters there to, to make it a little bit more interesting. So, uh, here I'm not going to go uh, as much on details as uh, in the interior scene. I am not going to show you through the whole process. I will just uh, quickly uh, talk through it. So, I created all these uh, elements as rocks, trees, and uh, different parts that you can see, which uh, in uh, one or another way, they, uh, by constructing the scene, they're helping uh, again with the same thing to guide the viewer's eye and to create this uh, part of the frame which uh, is the most interesting part. And this is, of course, our main character with uh, one enemy that's uh, at the moment attacking him. And uh, as a setup, it's a very, very simple thing. Uh, I have uh, my main light source at the, at the back, which is uh, directional light. It leads most of the scene. I have a couple of uh, complementary lights on uh, each of the characters. This is to create this rim light on them so that uh, they can be a little bit separated from, uh, from the background. And also, since uh, all the light was coming uh, from uh, the front uh, and uh, was pointing towards the camera, my character, which was uh, right next to the camera, was very dark from the backside, so I added one fake light there so that uh, it can imitate a little bit some bounces from the back or just to, to make it that it's not one black smudge there on the front. Uh, and that's pretty much <laughs> everything that uh, yeah, I have in my presentation for you today. So all questions are welcome. Hopefully it was useful for, for you guys. Thank you very much. Stephen. I, I forgot in the beginning to, to mention that for the best question, there will be a prize, uh, a good, really good power bank. And it's lying over there. So questions? Yeah, no, you have to come, please, uh, unfortunately. Spare me. <laughs> uh, did the sounds of the Horatio return sound, siphon sound from the battle? Oh, did, did, did uh, they return safely? Yeah. Uh, I hope so. <laughs> oh, you don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, of course. As a, as a main character, you need to kill as many as possible. So, yeah. No, I, sure. I, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm sure that they returned safe and sound. Right, sure. <laughs> Thanks. Any other questions? Oh, second one is coming. Think about others, yeah? 
Uh, hi. Hey. When you when you are working with baked lights, mm -hmm. you have to uh, bake them when making changes to the scene. And do you have uh, some uh, pipeline to maybe work with dynamic lights and then uh, change to bake lights in the process and have the same result or as close as you can with dynamic lights as you will have with bake lights? Uh, that's a nice question. So usually when uh, it, it depends a lot on uh, what exactly I'm working on. If I'm working uh, on a static frame just to show a nice picture or just to use it as a concept, uh, usually I uh, start with the light setup in a very early stage, like when I have some gray box design of, of the level and this uh, helps me make uh, very quick iterations to it. Uh, and uh, check my ideas. Uh, of course, if uh, I'm working for um, a scene which is uh, supposed to be in a game and you're, you have to walk around and you have a lot more uh, possibilities to do, uh, I usually go through setting up yeah, quick, uh, something very quick with uh, dynamic lights and uh, checking uh, how, how the idea works and uh, later on, uh, because in Unreal you can uh, also uh, use stationary lights and uh, for example if you're going for baking uh, but you also need some dynamic lights for your characters, you can go for stationary lights and uh, it's uh, with dynamic lights you get a nice quick result to see how, how your light setup uh, is going and if everything is, is nice as, as mood and then uh, if you want to go for uh, baked ones you can always yeah just easily switch everything and, and bake it but yeah I would say that best practice so far for me and what I'm trying to do is uh, usually to already have at least some kind of an idea when I'm creating the scene uh, either for game or uh, just for a static shot uh, and already have uh, a little bit in my head uh, some planning in terms of uh, what do I want to achieve in, in a mood where the characters are going to be able to walk and uh, yeah, what are the important parts of, of this whole scene. Okay, and the second question if I, if I may. Uh, mm -hmm. When you have a glowing object uh, that uh, you can use emission uh, to, to bake lights from, from it or you can use the uh, normal light to, or combination of both, uh, do you have some, uh, uh, some ways to, that you prefer? Uh, for, uh, you mean uh, objects which uh, are uh, with emissive materials uh, on them, right? Yeah, 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 but maybe for as well for the panels at the ceiling that you don't really need uh, the light, but you want to do this uh, emissive feel, not volumetric, but but using emissive, emissive uh, 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 I suppose uh, not not volumetric, but emissive in this case. Mm -hmm. uh, well, usually for uh, for. Objects which which have some kind of uh, emissive material or emissive parts from from, from them, I uh, there is a, like a material function that you can create in, in Unreal, which uh, you can uh, later on if you're baking the light, you can pretty much include this uh, emissive parts into your uh, into your bakes, and also uh, if you want to use them uh, in in your volumetric like to affect your volumetric. Uh, uh, fork into the scene, you can create like a custom shader for that and uh, yeah, pretty much uh, use it or not use it depending on uh, if this really helps you somehow enhance the mood there or uh, it's uh, just annoying and you want to completely <laughs> remove it. So yeah, there's, uh, there's, I would say, quite a lot of different ways to, to proceed with uh, this kind of things. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks. Any other questions? Still have some time. Yeah. Do you have any like tips for working with uh, skylight and outdoor scenes? <laughs> From where to start? Uh, I don't know. Maybe it should be darker than default, or so. Usually, for uh, for uh, working with skylight. Uh, most of the, not most of the time, I would say all the time, I, uh, I, I'm not using uh, capture scene. Uh, so I'm not using uh, this default capture of, of, uh, of the skylight. Because uh, it's, I would say, it's not as accurate if you are using an, an HDR. 
So uh, I, I usually prefer to use uh, HDRs there uh, because it gives you a little bit more accurate uh, colors and more accurate colors, especially in the in the bouncing of, of, of lights. And I I even if you are using this as a, on a dynamic scene, you can uh, still create. Uh, like the lower hemisphere, for example, from uh, from the uh, whole uh, skylight, to to be a little bit darker, or let's say you are creating a forest, so you can go with uh, something dark greenish, so it will get uh, some of those lights there. So yeah, if I can give one general tip, this will be that with having like some custom HDR created for, for the purposes of the scene will be probably the best uh, solution for, for, uh, for it. Okay, so because I was thinking that it's problematic, so but thank you. Another questions? More questions? No? Nothing. No more cont contestants for the, for the prize. <laughs> um, all right, it was... This was Stefan Ivanov from Sparasoft. Thank you very much. Thanks.